What's up? I'm Nixie Pixel, and you're watching OSL, your source for open source. So my last video, I talked about a tar ball, and a lot of people were like, "What is that? I don't want to be tarred and feathered when I'm just trying to compute." And actually, it's a lot cooler than it sounds. It's archiving, and I'm going to show you how to do it using the command line. I promise, it's not scary. <laughs> Brought to you by TechFeed. The basic tar command is easy. It's the options that you add with it that makes it powerful. Let's break up those options into two groups, function-driven and electives. We start by using only one of the five function options because they're mandatory. So I'm in the right directory messing with tar balls. C creates a new archive file. As you can guess, you'll probably be using this one the most. X extracts those files from the archive. R adds more files to the end of a previously created archive. U also updates the archive with new files, but also existing files that have been updated. And T will display the names of the files in the archive. So now we know about function options, and we must use one and only one of them. So we can move on to the elective options, the extra stuff. We can add all of these options in our command line at the same time. F shows you the file name of the archive, which is always good. You should put that last. V means a verbose, but more importantly, it'll show you the output of what's going on. And Z deals with compressions. It'll run gunzip to uncompress files while you're extracting them, and gzip to compress the files as they're added to the archive. So let's give it a shot. Like I said, we want to do tar with the main command, and then the options, dash x. I'm doing z, v, and like I said, end it with an f so you can see the file name. And then the file name you want it to be. And I'll ls into the directory, and boom, it's there. Now let's try to extract the archive that we just made. For display purposes, I'm just going to create a new folder and drag the tar ball into that. And then enter tar, and then it shows the file names of what we extracted, and we ls into it, and there it all is. Since we touched on gzip, let's go a bit deeper. Oftentimes we'll want to compress the files that we put into an archive because who doesn't love saving disk space? Running gzip on one or more files will compress them and add a .gz at the end of the file name, just automatically. It means GNU zip. And just like that, gunzip will uncompress and take the gz extension away. But what happens if you compress a file too early and find out that you actually want to view the contents of it? Do you have to gunzip it and then gzip it again? Well, no, you can use zcat. This is what happens when you use cat on a compressed file. It reads a bunch of text gibberish. However, zcat shows us that this GNU zip file is actually the ebook War of the Worlds. That's it for this week. I hope you guys dug learning about the function options of tar and how to play around with it in the CLI. It's really a lot of fun. So uh, thanks for watching OSL. Be sure to subscribe. The button's down in that vicinity um, so you don't miss out on next Friday's episode of All Things Open Source. Guess what? YouTube now has all of your favorite tech show hosts on one channel. You'll be watching my buddies Darren Kitchen and Shannon Morse from Hack5. You have John Verlakers, Soldier Knows Best, and Veronica Belmont even. The list goes on and on, and it's going to be happening every single day on that channel, as well as additional tech feed news bits, and it's just going to be epic fun times. Go check out the shows for yourself by going to youtube.com slash techfeed, and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single episode, because that would be bad and you should feel bad. Thank you.